Hi, Nitty. Hi, Nitty. Hope you're doing okay. We're doing some chemical reaction problems today. So while Diffie Q, we deal with physics, we sometimes are dealing with biology, you know, in terms of populations, even logistic growth. Uh, here we're dealing with chemical reactions. So here's what's happening. Uh, you've got substance X and substance Y. They're going to combine and they're going to form substance Z. So let's just say that you've got X grams available for substance X and Y grams available for substance Y. We're going to say A grams are formed from X and B for, uh, grams are formed from Y in this new mixture. And uh, you can see then the total of this mixture would be A plus B. In other words, you're seeing that there's a ratio of A to B in terms of uh, substance X and Y in this mixture. Q, Q of T is going to be the number of grams of Z at any time. And uh, we're going to assume that at times zero, we start with zero grams of the mixture. So the rate at which Q changes is governed by the law of mass action. So we know that the ratio of X to Y is A to B. Remember, A plus B would be uh, the total. So if A was coming from X and A plus B was the total, A over A plus B is really a fraction you can see we're making a fraction of uh, what we're having of grams of X. So we're going to have A grams from substance X out of a total of A plus B. That fraction times the total amount would be the total grams of substance X that we just used. Okay? At any time, given that Q is based on time. Likewise, when we're looking at B all over A plus B, B was the number of uh, grams of Y that are used in general. If we've got A plus B total, B over A plus B is a fraction of the total representing the fraction uh, made with Y. Take that fraction times Q, that's the number of grams of Y we have. If we add them together, of course, we're going to get Q. Now, if this would be the number of grams from X, as we just saw a moment ago, X minus that would be the number of grams of X that have not yet transferred, the numbers of grams of X that we still have available. Likewise, over here, that B all over A plus B times Q, this would be the number of grams from Y. Well, if we were to subtract from the original Y, that would be the number of grams that we still have available, the number of grams of Y that have not transferred. So here is really what we get for our differential equation, guys. For our differential equation, you can see that we're going to really say that dQ dt, it's going to be a proportional to x minus a all over A plus B, this is going to be the remaining grams of X that have yet to transfer. And right here would be the remaining grams of Y that have yet to transfer. We'd say this is jointly proportional. So we're going to use this idea, and very quickly we're going to flip over to the back page. And let's just say that you've got 90 grams of X available. 90 grams of X available, and 120 grams of substance Y available. So uh, we can say this is X, and of course right over here this is Y, because you can see that's really what we were starting with before. We'd say this is starting off, this is how much we have to mix together. 2 grams of X react with 3 grams of substance Y. Well, that means that we're going to use 2 grams uh, in general with X to combine with 3 grams. So A is going to equal 2, B is going to equal 3 to make 
five grams of Z. So, you know, Z, of course, is your A plus B. Uh, you know, you can see that's going to be five. So A plus B is going to be five. So when T equals 10 minutes, you have 100 grams of substance Z. So T is equal to 10. We're going to say Z equals 100. So guys, what we want to do to get us started is just, you can see at the top of the screen here, maybe it's off your page of notes. Uh, what we'd honestly like to do is come up with a, a very similar setup where we'd have DZ, DT. Instead of having a Q, we're going to write DZ. And here's K times X minus uh, A all over A plus B. Remember, this would be Z right here. And this would be Y minus B all over A plus B uh, times a Z right over here. Well, it only will take you a moment to get this thing set up. You know that your X is 90. And your A is a 2. And A plus B is 5. So this is 2 all over 5 Z. And we'll have Y minus. Well, my B is 3. And A plus B is 5. So that's 3 fifths Z. And guys, it's at this point where all you have to do now is actually solve this differential equation. And the solving, of course, can get to be a little cumbersome, but I'd like to clean it up a little bit. First off, I want you to notice that I've got a 5 in each of these parentheses in the denominator. Yes? Plug in. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Christine. This should be 120. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to substitute uh, that in there. And then to clean this up, I'm going to pull out a one fifth from both parentheses. I'm going to factor out a one fifth from both. Now, one fifth times one fifth is one twenty fifth. But factoring really means divide. I'm undistributing uh, by uh, that one-fifth. So I'm really going to be dividing. And you know, just to help you out, this would be 450. You know, think about that. If you distribute a one-fifth back in, that's exactly what you'd get, wouldn't you? Uh, and then over here, I'm going to uh, you know, distribute uh, undistribute a one-fifth. I'm really multiplying everything by five is what you're really thinking about. Dividing by one-fifth is multiplying by five, isn't it? So this becomes a 600 minus 3z. Definitely nicer to look at, right? Definitely nicer to look at. If you're ever in doubt, multiply that one-fifth back in. Now I'm going to do some more cleaning up. As I look at this parenthesis here, what could I factor out nice and easy from 450 minus 2z? A 2. And, and what would I factor out over here? A 3. If I factor out a 2 and a 3, wouldn't I really get a 6 out in front over here? So look, if I'm dividing by a 2, I'd get 225 minus a z. And then over here, I'm factoring out a 3. I'm dividing by a 3. I get that. Wow. So this is cleaning up in a hurry. I do think this is a smart move. It's going to make your problem look a little bit more friendly, right? So now what? Well, as we proceed, I think you can see that ultimately, guys, we are looking at a separable differential equation. This is a separable differential equation. And Tell you what, I'm going to get this uh, 1 over 225 minus Z and uh, 200 minus Z. Tell you what, I'll get rid of this equals just for a minute. And there's my DZ. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have our 6K over 25, and here's a DT. And uh, no doubt about it, we can go ahead and integrate. Now, the right-hand side... I don't think is the hard part. 
uh, you know, you can pretty quickly get a 6k over 25t plus a constant. The left side you can do with your 89. I'm going to pause for the video to save time. All right, so at this point, you know, once you've typed in that left-hand side, you can see you get your antiderivative quickly and easily. Uh, guess what I'd like to do next? I don't think this would surprise too many kids. Yeah, let's multiply both sides by 25. Uh, you certainly don't have to do that. But it's such a smart move for a couple of reasons. Not only are you cleaning up the left-hand side, but my word, you're also cleaning up the right-hand side, and that's the ultimate benefit. You know, the 25s cancel out here. You'll have a 6kt. Hey, 25 times a constant is a constant, right? You could put 25c if you'd like. Uh, next, I'm going to exponentiate. And uh, I'd be left with a z minus 225 all over z minus 200. And uh, here we'll have e to this power. Uh, but whenever we have that e to a constant, it, it's just another constant out in front. It's kind of like that x to the a times x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b. This would become e to the 6kt times e to a constant. You're working from right side to left side. But e to a constant is a constant, right? Likewise, I could take my absolute value away. Technically, normally, you take your absolute value away, you'll have a plus minus. You know, and we could intermittently write this right here. You know, sometimes kids will say, well, yeah, shouldn't you get a plus minus c e to the 6kt? Yeah, but at the end of the day, plus or minus a constant is still a constant. So wow, look at that. Uh, then what? Well, we'd like to solve for z. We'd like to get z uh, solved for. Uh, but there are a couple of pieces of information to help us out. First off, uh, they're going to tell you that when uh, t equals 10 minutes, you've got 100 grams. Uh, at t equals zero, uh, at t equals zero, how many uh, grams were formed at the very start? Did it say five though? At time zero, that so the reaction hasn't even started yet. It, it'd be zero, in other words. Do you see what we're getting at? It's like so you're in the chemistry lab, you start your stopwatch. And then you'd say, okay, now mix them together. Well, at time equals zero, you'd say we haven't even reacted yet. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, we've got that ratio in of, of terms of uh, x to y. But, you know, right now we could say, well, wow, if t equals zero, z equals zero. Uh, so we'd get negative 225 all over negative 200. And this would be, uh, let's see, that's a c e to the zero. And that just wipes out to a one. And uh, this would just cancel out. Let's think about uh, how many quarters uh, go into $2. What's that? That'd be, it. well, it'd be 8 down here and it'd be 9 up here. Wouldn't it be 8 quarters would make $2 and 9 quarters would make $2.25? I mean, you could reduce it that way, right? So uh, that's good. We're getting some help here. We could say, so z minus 225 over z minus 200 equals 9 eighths e to the 6 kt. And there's one other piece of information that we've yet to use, and that was t equals 10, z equals 100. So at 10 minutes, we've got 100 grams that we're going to be working with. The reason why they gave that to you guys is so you could find out what k is or what e to the 6k is. And it might be easier to find e to the 6k. But regardless, let's plug that in. We'll get 100 minus 225 over 100 minus 200. And here's 9 eighths e to the 6 times k times, 100, uh, times 10. 
So we'd have 9 eighths e to the 60k equals, well, this is...